But if you don't passionately love to do that type of sale process or the product that you're marketing, and you don't live and breathe it and understand it inside and out, it's going to be difficult for you to sell it. This is Stay Paid, the marketing podcast that gives listeners a competitive edge to stay motivated, find inspiration, and discover proven real-world tactics from some of the best marketers across the nation. Welcome to Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike, along with Luke Acri, and our guest today is Rosa Maria Marujo. As a seasoned professional speaker, Rosa Maria is president-elect and CEO of Trusted American Insurance Agency in Sacramento, California, and is joining us from her beautiful backyard in Sacramento this morning. She has been captivating audiences nationwide with inspiring talks on Medicare, Social Security planning, brand awareness, marketing, technology, business development, and unleashing one's potential. Hosting over 400 events, her engaging presentations leave a lasting impact, motivating individuals to take action. Yeah, that's in line with the yeah, theme that, of the show. That matches the, the sign. And achieve their goals. Rosa Maria, welcome to Stay Paid. Thanks for being here. Great. Excited to be here. I love everything that Luke has put together that I've learned about. And I just, I want to be a part of anything I can to support his goal and making leadership successes for people and learning entrepreneurship. That's awesome. what I love to hear, man. I'm excited to, to interview you, get to know you even more. Um, when I first met you, we got introduced through a connection through our VP of corporate sales, Andrew, who's just an absolute amazing. He's a stud when it comes to relationship building and stuff like that. And I remember getting off the first call with you, Rosa Maria, and going, Andrew and I called Andrew afterwards. I said, hey, that's someone that is a go-getter that will make things happen. Make sure you stay on this relationship because I, I'll just be honest for the audience right here. We talk to a lot of people in a lot of different organizations that tell us, oh, they're going to do something or there's going to be a relationship here or there's this potential. And it's like, yeah, you could kind of see, yeah, probably nothing's going to happen here. When we got off the call with you, it was like, yeah, yeah, this person, not only can I tell they're a salesperson, which I have great respect for people who know the art of sales, but you're a go-getter, you take action. And that shows you've built an organization that has 6,000 agents, you know, with you. Yep. And, and that to me, like so few people have done that and that do that successfully. Can you share a little bit of just your journey and how did you build it and think about attracting people in and teaching them how to be successful? Awesome. Well, when I first started just life of career life, I was an educator. So I got my teacher's license and I said, okay, this is super awesome, but you know, I'm not getting my fulfill. You know, I wasn't getting enough of that. So I got into the insurance industry and, you know, learned how to first be a public speaker, right. And how to, how to communicate with customers directly. So just starting with the personal one-on-one -on -one over the table, help me to kind of, you know, take it to that next level. Then I started to train people because they asked me, you know, how are you doing this? How do you know, how can we be a part of that? And so it came, it became a referral type of business for me where agents started to come on board and I started to train them on entrepreneurship and running your business. Like this is a business. That's the first thing I try to explain to them is, mm. Yes, you're a 1099 independent contractor in the world we live in. And that means you need to even work 10 times harder than a normal person out there because you won't put food on that table if you don't. Yes. And, and then just focusing on, you know, your day-to-day -day mantra. What is that? Your why? If you don't have a why, like this whole thing means nothing. And don't tell mm. me you want money because money is not a good mantra. Mm. Start with a real, what is my why? and make sure it's going to be that motivation for you. And it's always up there pinned somewhere on a paper or, on, or a napkin. I don't care what you do, but it's got to be the thing that pushes you every single day to get your butt up in the morning mm. and be better for yourself, your family. And don't worry, the money will come. The money always comes when you're doing the right thing for yourself and your family. So I do this all over the U S I love talking to different people. So getting agents, Focusing on uh, that process really came down to just having connections. I have a lot of, I, I have to be very gr grateful right now for all of my referrals. As I started partnerships, they would bring in referrals. Of course, retention 
retention was key for me. So as I have retention with these brokers, they appreciate what I do. And they're like, I have so many other people that need to do this. Also, I'm not greedy. Being being able to share in my commissions, I don't have a problem. I share in my overrides to support my downlines. Mm. And I make sure that all brokers know if you want to build an agency, there there is that anywhere you want to go here, I will make that successful with you as long as you put your mind to it. I'm not going to do the work for you, all of it. I'm going to give you the, the path and the blueprint to do it. And so that's how I built the industry, the whole model here. It's really networking and all that. Of course, you can do recruiting campaigns and all that, but I actually don't do that. I actually have built the business 99% from referrals. Wow. So. Yeah. And it's just like, it's so interesting. I mean, I can already tell, right? You can't, you guys tell just the energy level and like, it's just the directness. I freaking love that. So you, you've obviously built it through relationships, right? And you've attracted, one of the things you said that resonates with me is this idea of you can't be greedy and you got to give uh, to actually be able to attract people into your ecosystem. But the struggle is everybody needs the deal. Right. The struggle right now is people, they all believe you ask them, hey, give, give, give before you take. Everybody's like, absolutely. Relationships over transactions. Everybody's like, absolutely. I'm on that side. But then you go watch what they do and they are just all like, how do I close the deal? What do you coach agents on of how to build their own referral base? How do you make it today, like tactic wise? to try to implement and live out what you're talking about of not being greedy and leading kind of from a relationship standpoint, how do you implement that in a business? Well, the first thing is knowing what you're selling. I find that a lot of agents get in this industry, think it's going to be quick and easy and they can just follow a script. Yeah, there's scripts, but if you don't passionately love to do that type of sale process or the product that you're marketing, and you don't live and breathe it and understand it inside and out, it's going to be difficult for you to sell it. Mm. Because when you don't know what you're saying to people, it comes out as. So one of the biggest components for me is have that conversation, make sure you learn your product inside and out. And then you have a way to educate people properly about it because you're not afraid of any question that comes their way. Right. Right. So that's one of the biggest things I try to start with. And then the second is just once you actually engulf yourself in this model, I want to sit down with each of them. My whole team, we do this. We do business strategy meetings, mm. business planning. I find that if an agent has a plan, then they have a goal. Then they have a reason to succeed. It follows that whole process a lot smoother. If you just go ad hoc, you know, there are agents that do that, but there's a point when you burn out and you don't even, it's almost like you're running without realizing where your actual goal is to be. So I like to give them that motivation of, okay, I want to hit 50 enrollments a month. Well, this is the plan on how you're going to do that. And so if you miss one of those days, expect to not get that 50. So you have to wake up every morning with that goal, right? And that can be for anything. I mean, it doesn't have to be for sales. It could be for life, you know, just whatever your path is, have that on paper. So that's part of the biggest steps. And then we do every single quarter, we're having a meeting with them. And some of these guys, I have calls every day because they're new and they want to, you know, feel my energy. Yeah, That's cool too. Mentorship is another piece. So having a person that is either a peer or a mentor by their side has been one of the other key components that keeps them running. So awesome. kind of, that's what I do. Talk about personal growth then, because I know, you know, as a leader of an organization, how, how are you continuing to push yourself to grow personally? Uh, and then obviously coaching others. Cause I know you speak a lot about personal growth and I think that it's so easy once you hit a certain level to kind of uh, take your foot off the accelerator a little bit. How are you continuing to push yourself and grow? Well, that's a great, great, great idea and thought process there because there was a time, one time when I was making, you know, hitting the millions of dollars and I was saying, you know, when I first started and I got excited, right? And I slowed down for one minute to have a kid. Mm. Okay. Uh, then I realized, oh, 
uh, that's not going to work. Now I have a child and I need to make more money. I need to make <laughs> more successes. I need to be even better for him. I, I don't care about, you know, of course I want to grow the business and keep it going, the momentum, but it gave me another level, another edge on my motivation. And it was cool because that's part of what life is. You know, there are challenges, there are different experience that come in your life and they could change you for the better or the worse. It's a matter of how you perceive it. So when I have any challenge that comes my way, I use that as my fuel to keep going, to go even better. So I never ever stop. You could talk to my husband. He's going to basically tell you this woman had full stage three cancer. And mm. when, and she went to work wow. after having full surgery and, you know, all of these different things with chemotherapy and my whole staff knows I see it this way. If I am the leader of these people and I cannot get up every day to do what I do, they ain't going to do nothing. Mm. They're not going to give up. That motivation comes from the top. So I, for my own self, did this for my people too. It was for my whole, how can I make this keep moving? And I, I did it and I'm doing it right now. And honestly, it helped me heal faster. Mm. So when you motivate yourself, it only makes you better. It's like people who go to the gym every morning or every night and they have that, you know, I'm doing this. This is for me, my health. They eat healthy. They eat right. Same story. You know, you can take a day off and you know what that does. Absolutely. So. Man, that's so powerful. I didn't realize that you had the stage three cancer. That is just amazing uh, that you're able to overcome that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about like um, branding? I know you're an expert in helping kind of agents build their brand, build their marketing. Like if an agent's getting into the business right now, what do you think they need to do to build their brand? First off, they need a website. A lot of people don't want to put the investment in being online. We're not in an industry anymore where you cannot be online. So I highly recommend first getting yourself online, whether, whether it's a social media page, a group, if you can't afford a website, I don't care. You need to get on the internet. Second, figuring out what your cause is, what your why is very important because that is the name or the brand of the concept that you're going to go forth with. So I try to first start with their personal understandings of what they are as a human being. We sit down, I have a branding team and we sit down and we go through that. And what is, who are you and what do you want to portray to the world? And that is the starting point of your brand. And it could be a business of team. You know, I have people who are, you know, they're partners and they have a company and we do that story selectively as them as separates. And then I bring them together because I want them to, I want to make sure that they both or whomever it is in these teams personally all feel their own passions colliding together when they make that brand. And sometimes I've found when I've done this in the past, if I didn't start it that way with them one-on-one, -on -one, you can tell right off the bat who's the bigger leader or the starter in that company and they take over. Hmm. And you know what? It actually hurts the company because they already started on a path where someone is the forward person and the other one doesn't make those decisions in the same formality. Hmm. So, you know, starting with yourself again and then we brand, uh, of course, color design, everything comes with, you know, who you are. Of course, we look at your industry and we decide, okay, in your industry, this is what's hot in the market. You know, this is the kind of things you have to look forward to educating people about. And then we, you know, go with the brand there. Awesome. So brand established, where do you kind of go next from a leads perspective mm -hmm. in terms of getting the business up and running? Like where's almost like the quickest win I would, I would consider. Cause you got to get the leads in to get those clients, to build those relationships, to get those referrals, to build that just cycle. So where do you kind of start from the beginning? Well, you know, in my industry, I'm in the insurance industry, mm -hmm. right? And I focus on Medicare. So mm -hmm. my niche for that is Facebook. And why is that? Because seniors are there. Yeah. And then I also look at my agent's interest. If they are confident in being an educator, 
virtually or in person with seminars, we start targeting that concept because seminars is a really nice way to engage without pressure. Mm. So we will go that tactic. Of course, there's companies out there that help you with lead programs and, you know, you know, there's so many different ways. Do you, you can find, do you find them. buying leads like is it works for agents? Do you feel like, where do they fall down in buying leads? Cause there are lead companies out there, especially in the insurance space. I think it's important to have a good, I have a good referral source of, of companies that I find do what's right all the time. Okay. Uh, they're not using third party out of country call centers. Okay. And, and that's important for insurance and Medicare because it's really kind of a very hot topic right now where it's, it's being done in a way that's really deceitful to the yeah. senior. So we try to focus on things that are going to be more organic or I have partners that are in the United States that are, you know, focused on Medicare. You know, a lot of these guys were past Medicare agents and large agency owners, and they saw a niche that was necessary. So they created those companies. So I use those guys and there's many of them. I have four or five different ones, but that's the kind of thing you go with is, and that's part of the mentorship, having a agency that knows where to go yeah. and has, has provenly tested these things. I tested these myself in my own office, my team. I have employees that are, you know, sales reps. I was a sales rep and I tested them all myself mm. and we keep that. So that's kind of the thing. You just need to decide how much money are you going to put into this? Yeah. Because that's going to, in that's going to dictate where are we, where we start mm. and the business plan that I talked about earlier, you want to hit 50 deals. Well, guess what? It's going to cost money to hit 50 in the beginning. Yeah. What does that number look like for you? And then we take it from there. Right. Yep. Yeah, it's a hundred percent because you can, if you have the money, you can buy the knowledge. Like that's the great thing about uh, the money is you can go to somebody who's been there for 10 years, like a company, right. And, and buy their knowledge. They can do it for you. But a lot of yep. people, when they begin, they don't have the money. They have to put in the sweat equity. I'm curious because you've been at it for a long time. And I always love asking other business owners this. It's like looking back now that you are where you're at, what are some of the, what was the thing that you thought was true? that didn't end up being true, like that maybe you tried to go down this route business-wise, whether it's leadership and how you managed and thought about people, it's uh, how you spent your money marketing-wise, brand, like what is it that you've learned that you thought was true that you're like, ooh, that actually wasn't true. I need to, uh, I won't do that again at my next company. Transparency. Mm. A lot of people will hide, especially FMOs and GAs like myself, they'll hide what it takes to get certain things from the carriers like co-op marketing, uh, what it is to be a GA, you know, what are the levels, you know, how much is, how much are we making? You know what? Guess what? They're going to find out. And if they don't find out from you, they're going to be annoyed at you for not saying it. So I find that it's important to be upfront with people, be direct Look, I'm from New York. I know I can take it down a little <laughs> bit. It might be a better idea in that regard. So, okay, I'm working on that. But, you know, just being yourself and being upfront is one of the key things I found. And trying not to be so pushy with sales. That's another thing. I was actually, um, I, when I first started sales, I got to see people who were very salesy. And in insurance, you are not a salesperson. You are a consultant. Mm. So just reestablishing that brain, that thought process for people, I thought was very helpful and it, it definitely different. So no sales, you're an educator. When you go in as an educator, people are not afraid to communicate with you and work with you mm. and being transparent. Those are the two things I found that are just like totally important yeah. changes. The reason why you come across pushy is because your pipeline's not big enough. That's what I tell people. It's like you get commission breath or you, you know, and obviously you can get better at your pitch and stuff like that. But it's like, if you have the mindset of abundance and your pipeline is full, you, you don't need the deal. 
You're here to help them. You're here to show them the value. You're here to explain to them passionately why you believe in what you believe. And, and if they buy, they buy. If they don't, they don't. You know, but um, it doesn't mean you don't ask for the order. I think you and I both agree. You got to ask for the business, right? Then, then you're not even a salesperson. I don't know what you are at that point if you don't yeah. ask for the business. <laughs> but um, it is, it is pushiness comes from a lack of pipeline because in a lack of training is what I find. Yeah. Um, and then your comment on being direct, it is so true. I mean, every level I get to with Reminder Media, I just go, man, I wish I would have said that sooner. I wish I would have done that uh, faster and not worried about sugarcoating any bit of the message mm. uh, because it's not authentic and it's not true when you sugarcoat it. It's not true. And you think it's for the other person. It's really for you. You're sugarcoating yep. it for you, your ego, your manipulation, your what you want. And that's why you're sugarcoating it versus just calling it like it is and let the cards fall. Uh, where they yeah. may, because that's the truth and that's authentic. So I think you're so spot on there. Awesome. Rosa Maria, thank you so much for coming on uh, the uh, the podcast here. Before we close out, let people know how they can connect with you. Sure. So I'm on LinkedIn. So Rosa Maria Marujo, you could just look it up. Trusted American Insurance Agency is the agency if you're looking at that. And I have a number and I don't have a problem with people calling it. You just have to look at our website. It's TAIA.us and you can reach out to our, you know, website there. Awesome. So awesome. Well, thank you again. Thank you all so much for listening. You can get the show notes for this episode as well as the links uh, that Rosa Maria mentioned there over at staypaidpodcast.com. And if you enjoyed this episode and want to show your support, head on over to Apple Podcasts, drop us a five star review and a comment. Uh, we'll read it here on the show. And the best way to support the show is to simply share the podcast with someone that you know. If you want to get hold of me or Luke, you can email us at podcast at remindermedia.com or you can follow us on social media. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Stike. Guys, I'm Luke Acree. Rosa Maria, thank you so much. Awesome, amazing. Guys, go check her out. Check out what she's doing. The fact that she's willing to take your phone call is amazing. Uh, she's the real deal. 6,000 agents recruited. I think you can learn a thing or two. Here's my action item for you, right, that really stood out to me through the show is, you know, she can be so specific, so confident, so direct, and has built such a massive organization. Why? Because she mentioned it. You got to start with your mantra. You got to start with your why. And, it, and she said, it's got to get your butt out of bed every day. And money's not going to get your butt out of bed because eventually you'll have some and then you'll stay in bed. And that's not what you want, right? And so you've got to take the time. And most people don't take the time. That's the thing. They, they think they know their why. But they don't take the time to put it down on paper. And if you don't take the time to put it down on paper, then develop a plan to help you get there. You're never, what is it? If you don't have a goal, it's just a wish or something like that, right? So you've yeah. got to actually execute on that. So take the time today, write down your mantra, your what you live for. Pin it up like she said. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business. It's top producers take action. Take action on that today. 